We name them, task them, feed them, stuff them, wake them, and make them dance. What's your name? It's working. My name is Corey. We're new here. We just want to communicate with you and talk with you a little bit. That is a wheelchair out of the charity hospital, abandoned and less than a mile away. Very, very haunted. Everybody's come out and teach me how to play the piano. So we we'll use old school and new school methods, and one is the dead are hungry, the dead are thirsty, so we'll have liquor out, it's not for you guys. You treat them like you did in life, you give them the things that they liked in life. Did something happen in this room? Got a fight, you strangled your It was quick, after that nothing was quick. Dragged your body into the bathtub, took out a pocket knife and a handsaw, and slowly but surely chopped her up, then he cooked her in that oven, and put her in that fridge. What? And still on in the same fridge, the same oven. What's up everyone and welcome to the Overnight Channel. We're on a journey right now. We're actually in New Orleans. Uh, probably one of the most difficult travel days we've ever had. You guys had to land twice. Yeah, oh. we did. Yeah, the plane like almost touched the ground when he was like, nope, went right back up and yeah. everyone's freaking out. Because yeah. of the thunderstorm, right? Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I missed my flight. Yes. And then I was, I got here five and a half hours after you guys. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. then the rental car didn't bad, exist right? when we went to go pick it up. Yeah. And then also a guy tried to fight us at the rental car. Oh, wait, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 To be fair. Yeah. He's going to jump Jonah. Yeah, yeah. And Jonah was in the crosswalk. It sounds so like a fun game we should play more often. Jump Jonah? Jump Jonah. It's like Hungry Hungry Hippos, but it's like jump, jump, jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, get the yeah. out of the yeah. crosswalk. Wait. Well, we came all the way out to New Orleans because we're trying to kind of learn more about the backstory of the world that is the paranormal yep. and voodoo and Wiccan, the occult, and everything that kind of goes into the spirit realm. So there's no better place to start than, I believe, when we come to New Orleans, yeah. And to work with a voodoo priestess, a this practitioner. Is like voodoo central here. There are some credible experts here, and we're going to be meeting up with one of them, Mary, otherwise known as Bloody Mary. Oh. Also on this trip, we're going to Myrtle's Plantation, as well as some, a few other haunted locations up in the Mississippi area. But before we meet up with Mary, if you guys want to know a little bit more about voodoo and why we came all the way out here to learn about it, here's some information. Here's some information. Here's some information. Here's some. Here's you guys want to? You guys want to do it for me? You guys want to do the bo for me? Jack, you want to animate their? Um... No. Go ahead, give me the give me the backstory on voodoo. Backstory on voodoo, Brandon. Voodoo has been around since the beginning of time. You see, it started with Sir Jacob Winston Charles Jr. Theodore Roosevelt, and he began by gathering twigs and and brush from the local cemeteries and uh, began creating figures, figures of such that he would control people. <laughs> Voodoo. It's been seen in countless movies and TV shows. We know it as the cryptic craft of transferring pain through dolls, insidious potion making, evil spells, and the ability to manipulate fate. But what is it truly? Is it an art of menacing intentions utilized as an otherworldly assassin? Or has the message been misconstrued over the hundreds of years? The faith first came to Louisiana with enslaved West Africans. And that is where the misconceptions started to begin. The beautiful practice is connected to nature, spirits, and ancestors, while utilizing dancing, music, spiritual baths, prayer, chanting, and yes, sometimes snakes, but all within a positive light. It's utilized to cure anxiety or depression and help the hungry, sick, and poor during their most dire times of need. These practices are meant to be a benefit to their family and community. Yet the mass expansion of the faith to the United States was heavily due to the Haiti Slave Revolt of 1791, where New Orleans became the center point for many freed people of color who kept voodoo as an important part of their culture. Although a faith of positivity, the messaging was manipulated by slave owners to present them as dangerous and enhance their oppression. That viewpoint was adapted and carried on over hundreds of years to develop the now instinctive meaning voodoo immediately brings to our mind. To this day, it is still practiced in its true form as a way to communicate with the spirit world. So as part of our quest to understand the paranormal realm to the best of our abilities, we traveled to New Orleans to meet with someone who could teach us the true purpose and potential of voodoo. This is only our second episode from the Overnight Channel, with another 27 already filmed. So please, make sure to subscribe and enjoy the weekly journey to find proof of the paranormal. All right, cool. Well, let's hit the road. Let's go right. see her. 
All right, let's, do let's, this. Hit, let's hit the road, Jack. All right, well, before we meet up with Bloody Mary, I just want to let you all know, if you don't, that we are still running our overnight contest where every month we pick one winner, one subscriber, and we fly out to your hometown and we bring you to do an overnight investigation, something fun, whatever it is that you want to do. Two ways to enter, one super simple. How do you enter? On this video, just leave a like and a comment, and every time you do that on a video, it equals one entry. The other way is to head over to SendSociety.com. Keep, keep yep. talking. It's head over to SendSociety.com. It's a clothing that we run, and for every dollar you spend, also equals one entry, so it's super simple. And then you can just like hang out with us. Do whatever you want. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Just Everyone comment the words down, down below. below. Down, down, down below. below. Here, wait, is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Evan right here. Yep. Comment. Sorry. Comment down below. Actually, hold on. The lighting's better this way. If you comment down below. Can you just tell them what to comment down below? Jesus Christ. Welcome to New Orleans. Ah! Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Dude, it's New Orleans. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Brandon, are you okay? It's getting so cold. Let's go to Ooh. Bloody Mary's Haunted Museum. Ah, this place is uh, okay. we got going small on? and intricate. Are we oh, not supposed okay. to? Should, should we try the knock? The no, knock, right? Because well, oh. anytime the door is closed, you're, you're talking, talking we like gotta a, do the knock. We know what the Cecil knock is. Yeah. What's the voodoo knock? Can you do a handstand? We gotta make a door. <laughs> no. I hear some. I will. I will kick that glass out if I try. Don't get us in there. You know? <laughs> I know the knock. You guys what all know it. Get it. Knock. Okay. I, this is, this is actually a real voodoo knock. I learned this probably like a month ago when I was doing research. Okay. Okay. She's coming, she's coming. Take, how she's long coming. did, how much practice? Two, three weeks. Two, three weeks, practicing that? Yeah. Hello. Hey. hey. Howdy. Who is smelling? I suppose I am supposed to trust you. <laughs> it, it smells delightful in here. Oh wow! It smells kind of like what Patty had. It smells a bit like the uh, like the bowl that we had at Biltmore. Yeah, oh, it does. It's yeah. Similar. What? It was charcoal though. <laughs> I think it was, it was dragon's charcoal. blood. Go and dragon. dragon's blood. blood. Yep. Voodoo doll bar, twenty five dollars. Oh, are these? Oh. So we have some raw base voodoo dolls. And then we name them, task them, feed them, stuff them, wake them, and make them dance. Ooh, Wait, so you're saying, you're, <laughs> could you make a voodoo doll yeah. that embodies him, yes. but then transfer the abilities to me? <laughs> Is because, that possible? Look, hold no, on. No, that can, sounds can we show like you? you're trying to be skeleton. I want to show you something. We're going to dance at the same time, and All then right. you're going to understand why I would really like his skills. Five, six, seven, eight. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Is there anything we can do about that? Well, first of all, you should know that Buddha was a dance religion and a musical religion. So I'll be banned from the religion. <laughs> you might. I think you're already banned. I'm already banned. However, it does not generally judge on your dancing capabilities. Okay. May I say, we have bones and baubles here, and I'm going to gift. I don't know who would, let me, let me look, who is going to get the gift. Bones and bottles. Can't see your face. <gasps> oh, he's too nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was the smile. He's too nice. One of my best selling bones, a raccoon penis bone for you, sir. <gasps> You I've always I got a coyote. I've also got a coyote penis though. Is it, is it supposed it's, to be good luck? Yeah, or? it's supposed to help you get paid in late. Really? Oh, yeah, so, so this one, and, and yes, you walk, musicians who are in like their hat bands, prostitutes put it underneath the, the bed. It's a form of hoodoo or voodoo. It's a little folk magic. Yeah, so, so you can put it in your wallet. You know, if you had a hat band, you know, like old time hats, they would have had a hat band, you would have put it in that. So it is one of the more commonly carried male bones. Raccoon penis bone actually has so many different uses, it seems, right? It's good for the raccoon, too. 
Huh. Well, it doesn't seem like it's good for the raccoon. Well, it is what he, you know, I mean, when, he, when he uses it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's for, for, till, it's for fertility, that. you know, and they're very rapid in that particular area. So, yes, I I have quite an array of raccoon penis bones. Hoodoo. Hoodoo is the folk magic that surrounds the religion, the potions, the powders, the dolls, the charms, those type of things that help you get your needs met, where voodoo is the religion, honoring the spirits, and specifically honoring the ancestors. Ghosts are actually, you know, very much part of the ancient religion. Of voodoo. So I like to mix some of the old school beliefs with the new. Mm. So though I will interpret, it, or I, though I will add in electronic devices, I prefer to, you know your own your own raw. Right, the sand in the back. We're gonna go there. Yes, yeah, I'll show you. Later. Oh, look at the chicken feet. What are chicken feet good for? The chicken. But they're also good for you know pulling things in, <laughs> drawing things into you. You know, you, it's basically just apply logic. When you, what's the animal known for the most? Well, that's what you would try to assimilate by carrying a piece of its fur, its bone, its nails, mm. or things like that. It sure looks it's like you have a dead zoo. A dead zoo. It's I find them say. all alive. Mm -hmm. I oh. find the energy within the bones oh, a relic. You find them all alive, and then you make them dead. No, I, <laughs> I thought that's what you were saying. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, just, my shot. I just meant, I, you I know, just like raccoon you... raccoon penis bone. Just out. like you may connect with spirits in a place, or you might connect with a spirit I heard that too. Yeah. Through their ashes and stuff. You can connect you hear that over the there? animal through carrying their bone and things. And so the alligator, the alligator is kind of connected with the ancestors as well as old creative energy. Voodoo is a old old religion. It's animistic, meaning there's beliefs in their belief in the spirits in the trees, in the waters, in, in everything in the world. Everything has a purpose. God gave a purpose to everything find the purpose, work with them together. So it's a dance religion, a musical religion. You dance for the spirits, sing for them. And there's trance dance possession, but it's not like Linda Blair. You know, mm -hmm. it's more like the concept of a, you know, a spirit talking through a psychic or a medium. This one is for you. Let's say if I said that you were worried you're going in place, this black one in there with the mirror reflect away negativity. So this one is more of a protection where this one would be something that draws the spirit or draws the energy in. It's an attraction, Gregory, that can be tweaked towards love or tweaked towards spirit attraction. So there's different ones, some from making money and gambling, you know, there's specific What's things that you might carry the secrets. Oh, of secrets. yeah, I found the penis secrets. Bone. secrets. This is exactly what you looked like in the airport all day today. <laughs> <laughs> so here, over here, over here, That's I have really these are can, these are these are spell candles that I make. I will see now. <laughs> Wait a second. What are you looking at? <laughs> what are you making fun of? The no, I'm saying, I'm saying this is what Elton probably looked like in the airport all day today. Ah, that's yes. why they, they slowed it down for him. Yeah. Come this way. Yeah, it seems like I, you haven't been watering your flowers very much. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes it wasn't dry. Yeah, sometimes Corbin's dumb jokes yeah, are really I funny. <laughs> I do have a one. Oh! oh. Much Whoa. better for you. Go back over Elton. there. Get, yep. get back. Go back over there. It's a better for you. There you go. Is that a werewolf? Yeah, that's a... That's a so you get the hang, you get it? Does anybody have a fedora on them? Yeah, damn it, I don't have any. I've got other kinds of hats on, no fedora. Yeah. Underbite. There we go. No, it'll be an overbite. Oh, it is a little overbite, yeah. There it is, there it is! Oh. Whoa! This is my ghost photo. Of oh, wow. a looper. See the, the ear, the, oh, the yeah. brow, the snout with the nostrils, the mouth open, and the teeth. I believe them to be interdimensional, so they do have a form that is spirit form. Where did you well. take that? I took that in the certain swamp area down out by the graveyards in the oh. middle of town. Are you familiar at all with Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah, well, very little. I haven't watched the new show, but I know how it has uh, many layers of different dimensions and things yeah. that come through. And dire wolves or this. We call them here the Loop Garou or the Rougarou, which is the red eye one. Madame Lalaurie. Huh. And her ghost house on Royal was actually built by my great 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 aunt Emily Trusclair, who got that as her dowry gift and built it in 1831. My family's been here 300 years, so uh, even though I joke about being related to the ghosts, I, I find out I. You I actually am. are. <laughs> yeah, wow. like So we have uh, this is awesome. Wow. 
this is my seance part. It's also my ghost photo gallery. I had a, like a early museum in 1998. So I had the ghost photo gallery and actually one of the first for this time around, like most people have. So I had like a little haunted thing at one point in a haunted slave quarters not long ago, closed right around Katrina. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of traveled with me at different places, was in my house. And then about five years ago, I moved here. I have my Marie Laveau altar and shrine over here where you can leave oh. offerings. And remember, the dead are hungry, the dead are thirsty, they like cigarettes, they like cigars. She likes that a set. There's beer over there. It would you can better. turn off the other lights, yes, but th this no longer has a dimmer. So Marie Laveau would be, you would say, your mentor? Well, she's really what they call your spi my spirit guide, or in voodoo sometimes it's called Matet, Matet, which is like the head spirit, like a guardian angel, mm. you might say. Okay. So in that level. Um, but I am specifically keeping the Marie Laveau New Orleans voodoo tradition alive mm. here in New Orleans. So she would be the head spirit of that. And she's a big spirit watching over New Orleans itself. Wow. I mean, I heard about her as in, you know, kindergarten. Yeah. You know, so this has yeah. always, always been here. 1881 is when she died. In fact, her, um, what's today? 1881? Three days from now, I'll be having a little ceremony and a blessing with her evil away cross. She did exorcisms too, because it's her death day and your death day is your feast day. So her feast day is in three days on the 16th, when you're leaving, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Wow. How many, how many would you say are left in your house? So in my particular house, I have about, it. let's say, it's family and friends. So it's a small house and I want it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's about nine. Okay. And so there's a lineage that goes back. So New Orleans voodoo itself doesn't have uh, as lot of adherence because I suppose uh, it, it kind of went underground a little bit in the early 20th century, but it grew up side by side with the colony. The Marie Laveau status and such kind of, when she died and when her daughter died, there wasn't the same way that they gathered together. New Orleans voodoo was always part of everything, and it might have just kind of dissolved down to just the hoodoo, just the spells, just mm. the potions, not as many rituals. There was, uh, right across the street, it now says Armstrong Park, was the only free meeting place for the slaves in all of North America where they did open Buddha rituals, dances, and music. And I go to those trees and feed the trees and bring that energy back here and go to her house right there. I'm like right in the triangle of all that. Oh, wow. So we call those spirits and it's my job to keep many things about New Orleans a lot, the spirit stories. So she goes, lived near here? Like literally like a few houses just right over oh, there. Oh, wow. Um, so she born there and died there. When your family's been in a place so long, there's a lot of connections because it's yeah. a very small town mm -hmm. at the beginning, right? It just grows and grows. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have always been taught by my elders that spirits can recognize you for your bloodline. They don't see you like I see you and oh, he's got a beard, he's got a hat, you know. It's not like that. They can see you for your whole bloodline. They can see you for your mistakes. They can see you for the things that are coming ahead. They can see you for your triumphs, your fears. You know, they can see you for the, all the, all of those things. So, um, I think I'm recognized, you know, by mm -hmm. a lot of the spirits in the places that I go. Yeah. What does that mean? Thank, this, thank, you, this is like, thank you for doing that. <laughs> this, I, I, I've been trying to do something spiritual. <laughs> Open the gates, Bob. Open the gates, like Bob. Open the way. And then Father Son, Holy Ghost, the Moros, the Mysteries, and the Lord. Open the way, like Bob. Pass it, Open the way to all of our friends that are here today, to the spirits of North, East, South, and West, and to the fifth element, Grandmaster, who is best. We open the way. This is not code friendly. So. To give your breath, to give your saliva, is a piece of your soul, it's your DNA. You atomize it with the liquor as you spray and feed the spirits that way. That is a picture of a voodoo seance on the ground and dancing, so there was movement in the seance as well. Now, we do have a little spirit under the table. Okay. Right 
Michael's. Yeah, I thought you. Too. I thought Jonah was kicking my chair the whole no, time. No, Michael. Michael. Michael's a little boy. That's on legitimately the like looked. That's at why I kept like, asking you why you were well, looking no, that was around. The first time I was like, I thought I literally looked for Jonah. Yeah. Like, why Jonah keep kicking me? He's way over there. Really? Oh, yeah, hundred percent. I literally was like, Michael had been gone for a while. Michael's a little boy. I got, I got such a what? Oh, I got it on the other phone. A really clear EVP of his. But he loves it under here. There's toys under here for him. Sometimes there's some candy under here for him. There's I saw a lot the, of. There's a Toy Story toy under my. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. There's the different toys under oh, there. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of our spirits kind of went flatlined again in COVID. They need the energy and the life that just was not here. Especially the children's spirits, I believe, feel they were bad and so had to come tell them, no, 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 we're coming back, you know, it's not my fault, but, you know. Mm. And yeah, they, they definitely, we depend on each other, you know, they need the energy. Let me show you something in there before yes. we go. And we're taking all the spirits with us, they are allowed to travel through. Come on, Michael. That's Henry. That's Ramsey's. We got two ghost cats. Where is this room? Where it's upstairs. That's where I said with Lynch. When I do my ghost hunts, we watch everything, so I'll be able to do playback. And uh, oh, that, looks that is a creepy so room. Cool. That is a wheelchair out of the charity hospital, abandoned and less than a mile away, one million square feet, abandoned hospital. Okay. Very, very haunted. Everybody's trying. I Wait, does it still it. exist right now? Yeah. Like, yeah. they haven't blown it up or anything? No, they no, took, they took out all the medical equipment, though. Oh. But the building is still there. The bottom shelf belonged to a voodoo doctor. The men were called the doctors. Collectively, they have a spirit in them, and they kept saying they wanted to go home. They wanted to go home. They were with a man in Georgia. And he had to try to figure out how to get him back. I ended up getting him. And they were keeping him up at night, chanting how much they wanted to get back home. So I. Made a deal, eventually got it, and I did a lot of providence with different psychics in different areas, and we all got some of the same thing, and you feel this, and it was... Did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. No. The, like, the red-looking stick. Oh, okay. It literally just, like, do -do 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 -do, and then fell. Like, as she tapped on it? Or and before? that was before I did... did that, it was way yeah. after yeah. that. Oh, okay. So, anyway, this had a heartbeat, is what I was trying to say. And I guess it likes something with that spoon. So some things were gifted, some things I acquired, some things found me, etc., etc., etc. What is that? Frank's box. What's a Frank's box? Oh my god, you're a bad paranormal investigator. Naughty, oh, naughty, naughty. We're brand actually. new, for the record. We're, oh, like, you okay? we're like nine months in. Oh, okay, I did not know that. Yeah. I just figured that. 35 locations, nine months. Thomas Edison had made a blueprint for the telephone for the dead, of which the man, Frank Sumton, dug it up. And what was not completed about it, he got through shortwave radio like that to finish that and made the first Frank's box out of an old computer, and that's the echo box up there, okay? So the second one, which is there, was the second biggest one. And as you see, they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. So Thomas Edison and a few others back in the day were experimenting with what they called radio voice, which is a way to communicate with spirits on the other side and or aliens, depending on which belief system you had at the time. Oh. So they thought that the words would come, you know, travel over the radio waves. Uh, so this has been around for a while. So I have a picture back there of Alexander Graham Bell, who in, it invented the telephone, or they say, to try to connect with his dead wife. Now there's a man, he's, I think he might be dead now, but he, he was old, he was in his 80s, I'm not sure if he's dead or a lot, in, in Italy, and he has been speaking in a, with a radio like this to the dead for like 50 years, and he, you know, does more of the shortwave radio connection. He talks to angels, and he specifically tries to connect dead children with their parents. Wow. So basically, the, what I mean by the naked is just walk through all the rooms, two minutes, and get your initial gut reaction. Okay. And then we can discuss it or try to communicate here. I don't ever tell people until after they go mm -hmm. up there, because I do not want to front load them on what yeah. they should feel and what they shouldn't Have feel. Have a bias. Um, half the people know the story that I can't help it. I just tell them no spoiler alerts. You know, I want people to just feel. When you walk up the stairs and walk in, simply say hello, my name is. Mm -hmm. Introduce so No, just like just as you walk in, yeah, yeah, yeah. just as you walk in. After that, so I, I mean, kind of did it to the overall spirits down here already, but I well, I always make people do it again okay. and close the doors. So the lights are good. And I'm sending up. 
Go on. Yeah. Fresh meat. Oh boy. Going in there? There's two people up to go in there? I think so, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go in the bathroom. Oh, I'll go in the bathroom. You should, you should go check that one out. Yeah. You should, Evan should go check that one out. Yeah. Evan, here you go. Welcome right. to a very comfortable, pleasant looking. Oh, look at that one. Oh, jeez. When, when we first came up, I feel something right here. But then, like, in there, like, I don't really... It doesn't make me feel too weird. But over by the bathroom in that room is a completely different story. Yeah. All right, one person each room. Yeah. I only have two devices. Ooh. So, what's that? Yeah, what is here? Basically... Directional REM pod ish. You know what I mean? Can I do that? Sure. I put it in the center of the room, probably. Yay! And then I can put this in the children's room. Okay. Brandon and I were talking about going in that room. I'm going in the kitchen, Corbin's going in the bathroom. Yeah. You guys go in that room here, I'll hand you this. You directional REM pod. I'll get that for you guys. You guys can ask questions and whatnot. Cool. Right. cool. I'll go sit in the creepy children's room, I think. My name's Corey. I have Evan with me right now. We don't mean any harm. We're new here. We just want to communicate with you and talk with you a little bit. He's got to go in there. Come on. You know you want it. <laughs> what, in the little thing? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he knows it's there? Yeah, he pointed to it in the dark. Oh, when yeah. first went up there the first time. out and teach me how to play the piano because I can't. I'm probably pretty good at it. Oh. Perfect timing. Cool. <laughs> wow, that was cool. See what's in that crawl space. It's the Chucky doll, right? Where? Right here. Is that Chucky? Oh! I can't tell, it, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Oh, this is not the door? No, it's not the door. Oh, it's what? The closet. Oh boy. <laughs> the door opened. And it got stuck open, and then it shut as I walked over here. Really? Yeah, I'm, oh, I'll see you later. Oh, I was just gonna come in and check on you guys. <laughs> when we were talking, did anything happen? Um, not so much. Uh, are you in here? Something happened in this room? Time to come down, boys. She says it's time to come down. Okay. Right. Summon. We're back. How was that? That was very interesting. <laughs> it was. There's some very creepy places up there. Okay, so. We have many different spirits here, and I said different ones reach out to different people, which is why I said maybe try to go in the different rooms. Where did would you say that you felt the most at? Well, we went. I went to the bathroom, and he went into the kitchen. Saw him sitting there in the mm -hmm. arms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For the most part, I felt like I couldn't breathe all that well. I felt like it was really kind of an intense room, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, it seemed like in the middle room, it is the most clear. You could catch a breath, but then when you get back into the kids' room, it feels the same way. It feels very intense. It feels very. It almost feels small. You said you didn't feel much when you were playing the piano, but I saw that you were, when you first went in there, you were feeling the closet area, right? You were like pointing towards it. Yeah, I felt like there were... I was kids. trying to get you to go up in there. Really. Into the closet? Oh, yeah. oh it, didn't, it looked like it ended. It looked like it was like oh, one no, foot. Was around. But yeah. What? I felt it the strongest the most when we first went up there, when we initially walked up in the first room. Mm-hmm. 
That's where I felt like the heaviest feeling. Did you feel that before or after you sat down? I felt that before I sat down. When okay. I sat down, I kind of felt at ease. Okay. But before, when I was just standing in the room, it felt heavy. Yeah, the corner that I was sitting at when we first walked in, I just felt like a, like a really just like strong energy, like in that corner, just like watching. And then when I walked into the like kitchen and bathroom area where you guys were mm -hmm. at, I kept getting like a stabbing pain. Like like on like my like ribs or like stomach area, which was kind of weird to me. But I went back out to the living room and I you know sat in that corner, which was weird because when we first walked in there it was freaking me out. But then it kind of gave me more of like a comfort. They said you've been seeing things since you were a kid. Did you see any spirits or get any ideas of who, what, when, where, what? No, I felt uh, it felt like my shoelace was like rubbing against my ankle for like. <laughs> A second or two when we were in the kitchen but I looked down and obviously my shoelaces are tucked in yeah. so I was like I don't know what that was hmm. but that was about it so you said the, again the initial yeah. impact but I think you said something the most uh, there was somebody that was choked up there it's mm -hmm. so a lot of people feel that choking that heaviness yeah and another thing that people feel consistently which is a strange way of describing it is they feel like they're in a boat and they kind of lose their equilibrium in a certain, oh, certain yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Where they're not you said that before we even yeah. got up there. Yeah, yeah. the kids are. Yep. Yeah, so in voodoo, I mentioned briefly before, I believe, that there's something called trance dance possession, and mm -hmm. it's called sometimes a possession crisis. It's like when the spirit's trying to come through you and give you a message, your natural reaction is kind of push away. And, and a lot of people, they, they kind of start losing their equilibrium. So I'm thinking when people describe being on a boat like that, that that's what's happening. And that, you know, they're, they're trying to like push it away. I can take spirit very gracefully and not, you know, do that. But there's some people that bucket like crazy, bounce off walls, mm -hmm. do things, men more than women actually. Some people feel the strangling, so, you know, there's that. But the kids, the kids that were not hurt or anything, they, um, the slave children, there was this little boy by the name of Abe. He's in the closet. Uh, he likes the closet. That's his spot. If you throw things at you, apports, you'll get little stones, little coins that just come out of nowhere. So, oh. The children have been seen, the little boy has been seen by 40 different years of tenants. The backyard, up front, up here. And, you know, he died of yellow fever, which is the main plague that most of the people in New Orleans died from but mm. early on. But he just wants to play. He's, uh, you know, he, he's up there. And then there's his sister. I've been thinking it's his sister. A little taller, a little older. She likes the piano. She likes the tea set. She likes the dolls. The dolls themselves, many of them are haunted, too. You'll get the hair stroked sitting down sometimes at the uh, piano or down in that area and hands held and whispers in ears. So maybe you'll get some EVPs from up in there. And a variety of others that come with the haunted artifacts and things. And of course, the modern ghost story that I was not going to go into, but I'll do it very briefly for you so that you know it's the story of Zack and Addie. So that was the strangling, strangling thing. He strangled her up there, but that's not the bad part. Is strangle, I mean, it is the bad part. Because <laughs> he killed yeah. her. Yeah. Had a fight, he strangled her, he said it was quick. After that, nothing was quick. And we have his confession and his diary and everything, so we have details. And um, he, he continued to drink through the night and do drugs, and he passed out in a drunken stupor on top and got up and went to work. Came home, dragged her body into that bathtub, took out a pocket knife and a handsaw, and slowly but surely chopped her up. Then he cooked her in that oven and put her in that fridge. What? And it's still oven in the same fridge, in the same oven. So. For a haunted artifact, for residual energy, there's nothing more intense than oh that. Um, it's the same one. The la I asked that landlord why he kept and he said they worked, you know. A veteran's family here at Christmas where he was a veteran and the spot where you were at and stayed at and where you went to first, mm -hmm. that's one spot where he's at, where he brooded, where he said he was worthless, where life was bad. You know, that that is a very melancholy spot usually. or hard on a lot of people but you said you felt a comfort there he feels comforted when there's military that come which is why i wanted to know if you were military mm -hmm. because both of you zoned in on that spot wow. which is where the chair shakes people get grabbed groped touched you know right in the area where you and you were yeah. in the kitchen yeah because he would be out wash his hands go back into wow. the kitchen right and all kind of stuff happens wow. in there some people see red liquid coming out of the sink. They don't know the story till after, if I can help it. Please. And 
Yeah, I'm yeah. sure the liquid just... Uh, both the of their spirits are growing. They were kind of stuck in the death mode when I first got here. He's got a bit more karma to deal with for this murder and then suicide, where he killed himself and jumped off the top of a nearby hotel. Uh, but uh, he came back here. And she's slow cooked up there for 13 days. They had only lived up there a day and a half when this really? happened. It, they had just moved here. It was a year after Katrina. They're kind of considered the last two Katrina victims. I've been working with their spirits for full time for like five years now. Um, sometimes they still fight. Sometimes they kind of steal a kiss. Most of the time they're dealt with as individual spirits, occasionally as a couple, but mainly as individual spirits. Hmm. She's got a lot of spirit growth and she's a growing spirit and she comes, to, she wants to help people if they have relationship issues, she wants to go party. They were both bartenders. And they rode out the storm, and it was a dark time. And there was a lot of sex, drugs, and rock and roll involved. I'm very sensitive about the story, which is why I said I didn't want to do the story upstairs, because, you know, I try to open to all the spirits here, not just that yeah. story, but you cannot ignore something so dramatic that happened to a place. Mm -hmm. So there's modern ghosts and colonial ghosts. And I do believe that spirits can grow in the afterlife, and that if they have someone to help them, that they can. Mm -hmm. And, um... They're much better than what I got here, but they're, you know, they still have a lot of work to do. Hello, would anyone like to speak to us tonight? Gotta like it, hello. Let's see like this. Oh. Hold on, what happened? I heard a woman say hello when I a did guy too. said, and a guy said, we're here. Hey, these guys might want to work with you. Do you want to, they, do you want them to take you home? <laughs> I said no. Whoa. I didn't mean that personally. I meant the box. Who's the spirit guide tonight? Do we have a technician that will assist? Technicians assist. Oops. Give it a little offering. There you go. Make it stick. Hello, is there anyone there? Um, yeah. What's your name? It's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Did you like the sambuca? Good. My hand is like having that. a serious twitch attack. Look at my thumb. Look at his muscles contracting. <laughs> Did you see that? My thumb was having like a Charlie horse. Take those and pass it to him. I'm getting all your energy back. Michael. Michael. These are my personal baby cards. I'm just going to pull a card for your, your ventures. Try not to get too much Sambuca on it. Sticky. Oh. Well, I pulled the Marie Laveau card. Yeah. So you are blessed in your journey by the spirit of place, the spirit that looks over the death. Her tomb in St. Louis one, though closed at present, has been a legend trip and a sacred pilgrimage for people to get healed since her death. And she people go to her, of course, when she was alive. So you got the Marie Laveau card, and then I got the Papa Leg Buzz while opening the gate. So you're on a good journey, and you are very uh, clear. Oh, wow. This would be more or less uh, um, on the outside, though. Which makes sense. Female energy is on the outside. Mm. I think it's not obviously with you, but you got two cowrie shells, which sometimes are looked at as the female, but there's also one closed mouth, one open, one talking, one silent. So you've got a female energy is on the outside as opposed to in your four. Travel and movement, you know, with the different bones. And what is this? this is. Uh, Gator bone over here. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, I think that you've got a lot of work all clustered up in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, but you have enough around the perimeters. Communication is still good. Movement is good. The four of you seem joined together. I don't know if you have lovers at home, mm -hmm. you know, that are, some are in, one is into it and one isn't. 
It kind of looks like both sides of the fence here. Of y'all being gone, I mean, you know, like they, 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 they don't get used to it. But mother, that's, this is like my mother's, it's the heart. Mm -hmm. So I've got that right on the edge. So there's, there's love, there's protection. This is definitely about magic and protection and old school stuff. And the brick dust is protection right in the center as well. And the raccoon penis bone is on the side. <laughs> <laughs> brick dust is for protection. So that's really big juju that we use in New Orleans. What'd you hear? You didn't just hear that? No, you I didn't because I was... I heard that. There was four knocks. Four. See, four. Me, me, it's always got to be three. So yeah, for you it's four though. We've got the four, the four on the thing, which represents the. Oh four yeah, there is four on the dice, right? Yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So the, But <laughs> when I knock and when we knock in spirit thing, it's always in threes. Like I showed you before, one, two, three, mm -hmm. one, two, three. Yeah. So the four is for you. I think you're doing good. Sounds like a good cool. thing. You sound protected. I mean, this is you know, it is like Mercury and retrograde right now. So yeah. Everything weird and off. No, losing the plane and all that. I mean, that's that's not losing it, but you know, missing it. Yeah, that's all part of what's going on. That should hopefully balance out soon. But you got spirits recognizing what you're doing. I try to find the way around what your positive is to strive for instead of worrying about the things that hold you back. Strive towards what yeah. you need to go for and. Keep up the communication, and that's with the women on the outside, too. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. keep up the communication within each other. Honor the spirit of where you are. The spirit of Marie Laveau of this place seems to have acknowledged you and liked you, so that's good for that card to be the first one to come up in Papa Le Bas. He's the guardian of the crossroads. He is the... The shadow man, right? No, not at all. No? No, no, no. <laughs> No, uh, don't listen to Voodoo from TV. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Papa Laba is the divine messenger from this side to the next. He's like the first child. Um, so he's the one that brings the messages from here to the other side, from all the spirits to God, if you will. So very important messenger spirit. Definitely not the Shadow Man. You're thinking of Baron Semeny or the Geddes, which they always seem to mix up on TV and give him a top hat. Now this is, he is kind of the opener of the ways, the remover of obstacles, the, the door and the message keeper. And almost in a way you might think of it like, like a Ganesh. So there's the crossroads, the even armed, and then there's the different aspects. And you make the veve -ve and sing. We opened the gates with Papa La Ball earlier, but what you open, you should remember to close. So Papa Legba plante poto, plante poto. Papa Legba plante poto, plante poto. Legba! This time in New Orleans, next time in Guinea. Ashe. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you. That was great. Yeah. Thank wow. you. Nice to meet you guys. Great May the you. spirits so much. be with you. Thank you for See everything. See you next time you're in New Orleans. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you Thank so much. You. Close the gate. Good night. Woo. Close the gate. Yeah. That's true. Here. Yeah, we didn't do that. Here. Oh. Wow. Thank you. Weird, you're not supposed to knock on wood, but you are supposed to knock on wood. Wait, is that wood right there? So okay, do you knock good. on wood or do you not knock on wood? You do. Maybe glass. No, now they're going to come home yeah, with you. I think that's good. All right. Let's get uh, moving to the Myrtle Plantation.